Well, hello, Patrice. Welcome to The Red Hot Truth. It is so great to see you online. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, my God. I feel like we should be at a party together right now. We're like, <laughs> we're all the glam. We're looking fabulous. You know what I find so revolting, right? Because I know your sister, Lindsay, as well. <laughs> and she referred me to you. And I was looking at your Facebook photos. And I go, went back to Lindsay and I said, Oh my God, how gorgeous is your sister? Like, it makes me want to vomit. And she goes, <laughs> I know, makes me want to vomit too. And I'm like, how is it that both of you just have these amazing good looks? And I was laughing because it made me reflect on the celebrant we had for our wedding. And she was so gorgeous. <laughs> and Doug and I were like, could you just put a bag on your head? Because must be our wedding right like stop that <laughs> i know i feel like you're lindsay so oh my right. gosh oh thank you thank you i'm gonna take it as a big compliment so I'll, I'll well thank god this is mostly a podcast and um <laughs> for those people who are curious what, <laughs> what patrice looks like head to the youtube channel mm -hmm. anyway <laughs> talking about um looks and perception mm. um, and we are dressed up as a bit of a party and we'll come to that and why we dress up like it's a party <laughs> um today's topic is branding which mm. is such a great topic um and really relevant for today's um, environment because I feel now the environment is inviting us women to be seen and to um, come out in our truth and that's really exciting and you do branding a little bit differently to how others do it and I'm really excited to explore that but before we get into all of that juiciness tell us about your fabulous self Oh, thank you so much. And thank you so much for having me here. I'm, I'm so excited. And I love that this is called the red hot truth because I'm so passionate about the truth. Mm -hmm. And so a little bit about me. My name is Patrice Douglas, as you guys know, mm -hmm. and I currently live in Brisbane, which yeah. it's just super sunny and, and heaven here. And I, I love it. And it's so spacious. And I, I grew up in the country in New South Wales and um, lived in Sydney for years and years and I was in I studied to be a graphic designer like a, a visual designer and I found myself um, after university in lots of different types of agencies and also in in-house teams for marketing and creative and so I found myself for about eight years I was working on some pretty amazing creative campaigns and I my evolution went from like the visual branding, but then into more of the creative and I did an, um, an advertising course. And so it's all just, it came together for a, a while to work on some amazing brands. I worked on Vogue, Virgin, Spotify, all the banks, um, working on a lot of their creative. But throughout that time, I started to do a little bit of freelancing on the side and what I was finding with these big kind of corporate brands, it was amazing and, you know, it was really exciting. But for me, it wasn't the depth that I was looking for. I was looking for something a little more heartfelt. I, at the time, I, I wouldn't have known these words that that's what I was looking for, but I was searching for more. And every time a brief would land on my desk at, you know, one of these agencies or wherever I was working, I was like, I was asking more questions. I wanted to know more. And the brief didn't actually require that at the time. So I'm like, okay, I think I need to go and start my own thing start my own business and work for myself and so about two years ago i actually went out and i i, I left the company that i was with i was with this huge property company a 12 billion dollar company i was creative director across all these different teams um and i left and it was interesting because it when, what i'm really passionate about now is like you being all of you and how all of the areas of your life actually touch very intimately and we try and separate parts of us, but it's just, it just doesn't work like that. Everything touches everything. And so at the time when I was leaving to go and start my own business and go out on my own, I was going, I was starting to realize how much, um, how insecure I was and how anxious I was inside. And um, I think I, I felt like I was really living in the shadow of so many amazing people in my life. Like I was, I would admire even my sister, Lindsay, so deeply. She's my older sister. And I always compared myself to her and 
I always compared myself to so many amazing women thinking, gosh, I'm nothing like them. I, you know, I want what they have, but I, I don't, I feel so different. And I would beat myself up like so much self judgment and so much self torture really. And so it was interesting when I started, you know, when you start your own business and when you, you know, you're developing your own brand, so much of your personal stuff comes up because everything touches. And so everything was coming up. And so as I launched my own business to help people like just in visual branding and in websites and social media, I was also going through a huge personal transformation, getting coaches to actually help me with my own um, self-worth and and self-love and all of these things. Yeah. And so the evolution of my business was that I was initially just working with anyone on their branding and then it evolved into working with men and women who were impact driven and who have a big heart. And then it just has so happened. I started to work with women on their brand, but as I was sitting with them to work on their, you know, visual brand, I was realizing that they, everything is a reflection of your internal world. And so when a woman's sitting there and she's actually trying to build this website and she's in a scattered place and in a shambles, which I also was too. Yeah. I was realizing that it really comes down to the person, like you are your brand, you are your business. And when you're not in a good place or look, wherever you are inside is going to be reflected in everything you create. So then I, I'm like, I want to get to the core of this. So um, I guess, yeah, where I am now is I, I help women who are wanting to leave their full-time job and go out on their own and create their own business, create a life of their dreams, have, you know, income, a lot, allowing them to access a level of freedom, time, freedom, financial freedom, just, and feeling free inside. And so the visual branding is part of it, but it really is helping women just really own their worth, own their brilliance, like back themselves and just be all of themselves because from that place, that's where everything unlocks. And so I'm just so passionate about helping women live a life of choice and of freedom and, and just living the, whatever that looks like for them, I, you know, if a woman wants to earn a million dollars a year and speak on the biggest stages in the world and, you know, it's that dream. Amazing. If that woman wants to earn a hundred thousand dollars a year selling oils for a residual income and just have a beautiful family and have freedom there, like it's really what is true for you and coming down to the red hot truth, like what is true for you and then, yeah, yeah working from that place. I love that. I, I feel that in my own experience, business is certainly the greatest personal development experience you can ever have, you know, <laughs> because the bug stops with you. And I mean, um, I, I mean, I've enjoyed, well, not at the time, but I reflect on all the failures I've had or the learning experience I've had. And really exactly as you say, I mean, life is a reflection of how we are on the inside. Mm. And I feel we're not, um, from a young age, we are certainly taught to compare ourselves. I mean, it really starts off as early as in the family home where parents do it not consciously. They're like, oh, well, you know, look how well your sister's doing, you know, trying to encourage you to to do what they want you to do, really. Um, and then it starts becoming this comparison game that continues in school. And, and so, and then we start looking at what uh, success is portrayed to be in society. Mm. And we start looking at other women and it does, it's, it's just this layer upon layer that comes up, uh, you know, that we, we layer our truth and the, greatest journey in business for me was certainly unpeeling those layers and um yeah and you know it didn't work in the first business the first business didn't work out which was the greatest lesson for me you know because i think that's i mean those uh, failures is not really the right term that's when things don't work out as i expect them to work out the adversity is the greatest lesson i mean you know that for yourself yeah. so, I am. Um, yeah, I, I love, you know, it's the, you know, a lot of people say it, but it just is true. Like the, the learnings, it's, it's really in those, like, you know, a lot of people, I guess, in the conscious community, like to say like the dark nights of the soul, those the really challenging times, the catalyst for change where you're like, you've ripped wide open and you're like, Oh, this that's so uncomfortable that you start to get clear on what you want yeah. and what you don't want. And then you can actually move forward. And it's, 
that huge, that expansion that happens when you're stretched, you know, from running a business myself, I've had businesses that haven't worked out too. ideas that I've kind of, I've just done because I thought that other like, you know, Oh, this is what other people are doing. I'll give that a go and not actually being with my own truth and what feels yeah. right for me and what feels good working from the head all the time and, and making those mistakes. But it's so powerful because I love to say your mess is your message. Like bless the mess. It, it comes from those periods where you get to like, you actually are made. And so, yeah. yeah I, love, I mean, I love that as well because I feel these experiences bring us closer to our truth. You know, without these experiences, we wouldn't know. But um, I want to I wanna go deep into that a little bit. I just, before we look into um, ourselves, our truth and building a brand around that mm. i want to look at the traditional branding how you know it's out there in the markets because i want to share the comparison so traditionally mm. what is the purpose of a brand and um how does a business use a brand yeah so traditionally and this is and i and i've come from this background as i said you know i worked in this for years and particularly i know that we're speaking you um the, the lovely people that will be listening to this and watching this, you know, coaches. And so, you know, it's really comparing this idea of branding that we saw for like big organizations where um, it's, it's really not about con really connecting with yourself and, and the individual. It's just, it's about like selling. I feel like there's just such a focus on selling and money for and concept of a brand is that you start to like manufacture and you start to hey um sorry patrice i just lost you for a second there oh. the internet so would you mind saying that again from the beginning yeah. so the concept of a big brand yep yeah sure yeah. sorry about that no, um, don't apologize it's not your fault <laughs> sure. um everyone's at home so the internet might struggle there are <laughs> oh don't worry I've, I've experienced this here but yeah please tell us again sure um, so yeah, so this idea of the big brand is obviously like just to make money. Like if you look at, you know, Coca-Cola and the big brands from, from um, Kellogg's, you know, it was to make money. And so therefore, when you're so focused on making money, you're going to make decisions and strategies that are focused on that. And you're going to manufacture the brand to suit a certain type of person and, and audience. And I feel like there's a lot, lot of um, like dark kind of tactics when it comes to, to branding and marketing, you know, tricking people into thinking certain things, taking them down a certain path to like get somewhere and then you sell them and, you know, not really telling the red hot truth. Mm. Um, and I feel like that was a real focus because it was such like to blow up a brand and, and really sell. And where I'm sitting right now with branding is is a much more heartfelt, a much more honest, a much more genuine, a much more authentic branding situation where you're not manufacturing, particularly for coaches out there, like rather than sitting there going, you know, what are my brand values and what would get people just to say yes? It's like that kind of branding and that kind of positioning, whether it's, and even um, this traditional idea of branding where it's, you know, the, just the visual brand and the logo and and, you know, the typography and things like that. I think when a lot of people think brand, yeah. that's what they think about. And just to compare that to what I deeply believe in is being your true self, being like peeling back the layers, as you said. And for a lot of people who are just starting out and wanting, like, wanting to start a business, a lot of people think, oh, I'll start with a logo. And I'm like, start with who you really are and what you really believe in, what your story is. Because then you're going to attract people that are actually on the same path as you. Because when you speak to, to everyone, you speak to no one. And so when you're boldly for yourself and you're boldly for the people that are on a similar path to you, that is so genuine. You're speaking from your own experiences rather than and, and your own values as a human being. Mm -hmm. Like what, do you, what are your values as a human? If you sit and you forgot about all the money and everything, what do you deeply, genuinely believe in? What... What do you value? What are the values that you live by as a human being on this earth? And from there, it's really connected to your truth. From there, it's genuine. From there, it's solid. From there, it's powerful. From there, it's magnetic. And that's when people start to just get attracted to you. And again, as I said, 
you know, we're not here to help everyone. We're not here to solve everyone's problems. We're here to serve a certain person's problems. And for a lot of coaches out there, you are probably more than likely are going to want to solve problems for someone that's in a similar position to you where you were maybe two or three stages ago. Yeah. But the more that you can own yourself and own your worth and, and even I always say to the women, like even forget the logo and the visual branding component, like just get clear on how you actually feel and what you believe in and speak from that genuine place in your tone of voice that isn't manufactured. And that's another big point of difference. I think from the traditional sense of branding, there was that, you know, that tone of voice that you'd like, you know, how can we, what would be attractive to those people? And you, again, you'd, you'd probably manufacture it or you'd probably create it. Cause for those big companies, you know, it's, it's sitting across a lot of teams, but particularly for coaches out there, the way that you'd speak to your best friend absolutely, in, in that tone of voice where you're just like, like, do you use some abbreviations? Do you maybe swear a bit? Or do, are you like, sometimes do you not make sense and you kind of fumble over words and you laugh at yourself? Like the beauty in that, the uniqueness in that, like if you're wanting to stand out in your marketplace, don't, you don't have to look outside. You're like, oh, okay, what's that person doing? That's how she's standing out. Because when you apply that, which is the traditional sense of branding, it's like, what is everyone else doing? What are all the competitors yeah. doing? Mm -hmm. Comparing yourself to everyone else. It's like, just if you can just turn off social media get, get in a quiet place and go, Hmm, what's how they're actually, how do I get to be like when I'm just with my partner or what, what is the true part of me? And actually using that, which is all here, you know, you don't need to pay someone. Yeah, for that. I totally. And I also, I just reflect back, you know, on when I first started the business and, you know, I had no business skills and no knowledge, you know, I got swept up, swept up in this romanticism of having a coaching business and um, and yeah, absolutely. The amount of time I spent on developing a website and looking at all those visual things and um, I later realized it makes absolutely no difference. Um, and also like my greatest challenge um, is that I love learning. I have a real curiosity and I'm a real seeker. I feel you. Yet <laughs> that is the one thing that is a big stumbling block for me because I lose myself because, because of um, the work that I do now and, you know, speaking and emceeing and being with a lot of people and creating harmony, I can be the excellent chameleon. Like I'm really good I work in a room and I'm the chameleon. Like I can speak to anyone. And yet in that, I, it's very easy for me to lose myself. Yeah. And so in order to establish the brand, the Red Hot Truth, and it's, this is years in the making. Like this is not something, um, I, I mean, it, it's, it's finally come to fruition. Fruition? Fruition? Fruition. Fruition. <laughs> it's come to a head. But, you know, this is years ago that I started playing with interviewing and then playing with ideas and, and, and really finding my own truth. And it's really about the spiritual practices that I've now taken on. And so what I really want to just say to that is, um, yeah, definitely explore through experience, I think, is massively important. But as you said, switch off the outside world and, and definitely come to your own experience because that's where you really find your own truth. Well, let me rephrase it. That's where I find my own truth. So I, I, I mean, I love that. Uh, so if, um, so um, it, this is very high level and the hypothetical, which I always feel that this consciousness spiritual conversation can often be. So I'm all about practical because how do we get the shit done, right? So imagine, I'm your client, right? Hi. <laughs> Hi. And, Hi. And I want to step out of my job into a business. And I'm like, hey, Patrice, I need some help with branding. Mm -hmm. So how would you help me establish the brand? Yeah. So, like, I, I go from the practical things to like the really tangible stuff. Like I say, like to help the business and the brand and like, you know, the ABN um, booking calendar, you know, all those basic things like, you know, make sure you have a web, an email address that actually looks really like it's like your name or your brand. It's not just like, 
you know, sexy mama <laughs> or something, unless you're doing a sex business. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? like it's like, make it feel a bit professional and start. And even I um, always say like, buy your name URL, like the domain name, like buy it because while we might not bid build the website now, it's just like, it says it's like an, um, it's energetic signal to the universe. Like we're on where yeah. we're getting the party started. And I think it's really nice for people to start like making some professional decisions too. Like, yep. Yeah, Okay, like getting these pieces of the puzzle together for my business. But when it comes to the branding, and as I said, it's not a bit like people are like, okay, so I need to, I need to go to um, those cheap website places, $5 and get a logo. That's where I'll start my brand. I'm just like, you, it'll cha- it's going to change so much because you're going to change. So yeah. let's just start with you first, peel back a few layers. And yeah, your brand and your business is always going to evolve and change. That's the nature of this life. So just get used to that. But Don't start there. The first place that I always get them to start is with their story. I give them, I have this like temp, so they can start to see their own magic and where they've come from and how they've gotten to this place because storytelling has been done for thousands of years. That's how marketing has been done around campfires and information has been exchanged for thousands of years, like storytelling and getting, and for them, you know, I would say your your clarity is their clarity. Like confused people won't buy, confused people don't buy. So get clear on your own story and, you know, the catalyst for change or how you got here. So you can get that down. I always get them to get down their values as a human because it's so important to attract the people that you want to work with in your content or just in your being by actually coding, like whenever you're creating content going, okay, these are my three values or these are my five values, like for me, simplicity, creativity, courage, heart, like these are my, so I, when I create content, I like infuse those values into the content so I I can actually attract people that I want to work with. Yeah, that's, I love that because that's really, um, I've used that too. I've just recently learned that and I've used that too. And I think there's a stage in business and I wonder if you've experienced the same way because I was starting out, I was like, I will work with anyone. Like, I just need some money to come in. I need some business. And then slowly articulating, wow, that person, they actually drain my energy. I can't be the best that I can be for them and vice versa. For example, I mean, I really don't do victims. Like, I just don't. That's just not my, my um, the person I can shine with. And so it's really that discovery by going working with these kinds of clients it becomes clearer what my values are did you find that as well definitely definitely but I I like to get them to start very early with this kind of mindset of actually like you know being true to yourself and your own values as a person so that you can see that you are your brand have they um sorry Patrice I'm interested so is this have you found an average and I hate that word but do many women you work with come in and go, yep, I know what my values are, hands down. No. This is such an easy, what a breeze. No, <laughs> never, never, never. And what I get them to do, like if they don't know, as I get them to do two things, to just start trusting in their body and trusting in their intuition. I do like a, a little meditation where I just get them to take like a few minutes and I guide them into getting their focus down into their womb space, into their body to get out of their heads and actually into the, center of their body to start trusting it and i get and then i ask them about their values and they and i'm like just whatever value comes up trust like start trusting the intuition that's coming through so even if so they just have it's so important to just have a starting place Mm. like i get them to create like practical create a folder with they have their story in it and they have like a short version and a long version sometimes depending on like there might be a few catalysts for change in that story and they will have like a few stories depending on who they're speaking to or, and then I get them to have their, their values and their why, like their personal why, like why do they want to actually start this business? Like what's the vision here? Do they want to have in five years time, have a beautiful home, have a cleaner, have gorgeous um, food on the table, like incomes just coming in 10 K a month or whatever. They've got their partner and they've got three kids. They've got ponies in the paddock. Ponies, eh? Yeah, yeah, like, (laughs) this is an example. I worked with one of my women the other day. (laughs) But, like, like, what's your personal, why are you actually bloody starting this? Because if you're just, if you're just leaving it to go and get into another rat race, it's so possible. But it's like, 
let's actually work towards a vision. So what's your personal why? And then what's your people why? As in, who is it that you right now in your gut feel like you're here to help? Mm. And so I just start getting them to create this folder where it's like, and also like, you know, they have their vision in there. They, I get them to um, write down like who they think they're here to help right now. 10 very, very, very simple questions that that person would ask about the industry that they're, that that person that coaches in. So if she's in um, health and wellness or in essential oils, like what are like the, like I, for want of a better word, like a silly or a dumb question that you'd be yeah. like, Oh, isn't that bloody obvious? <laughs> you know, like those simple questions and write the 10 responses very simply. Like, th so this is where I get them to start with their branding. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's a mixture of them as a person and who they're here to help and actually creating some content. So it's like tangible and practical, but as you can see, I haven't spoken about a website or a logo or a color palette just yet because that it's very, those things are important 100%, but it's not the starting point. And that's the big difference I think between a lot of like businesses and brands from the traditional to now. Like I know I have some friends of mine that have seven figure businesses that are only looking to get a website now. Yeah. Amazing. Cause they're just, they're people that are so connected with themselves and their why and their values and they keep taking action to just find the clarity as you said and they keep connecting with people and they're having living with so much integrity and doing business with so much integrity and putting their hands up when they're wrong and and they and that's how they've built their business and now they're like looking to go to eight figures i wonder then if a woman's looking to transition from her job to a business would you advise her then to look at doing this kind of work with you before she leaves the job. Um, because one of the mistakes I made is I left my job too early mm. and it takes time and money and energy to build something. Or well, it was in my experience and I had no fucking idea. Like, Jesus, <laughs> I don't know. I was like wow, you mean I'm not going to be a multi-millionaire? Sorry? What? what? But, ow. but yeah, so would you recommend that they start doing this before they leave their job or even maybe if they choose to step out of the full-time role, have a part-time role or some sort of financial backing? 100% percent unless they have a lot of savings in in the bank um because cash is king and no one's talking about it and I, something i'm very passionate about is talking about money really openly yes. um it's a mo whole module in my my main program my main immersion it's a whole where we like let's just let's go there let's make money our best friend like we're high we we say we want to go out into this coaching business or into this new chapter of our lives because we want to live financial freedom we want to travel the world and and it's like so you're doing it like to do those things you need to have money but you're not looking at your money you're not yeah. looking at you're not clear on your numbers you're not like just being open and honest with where you are right now and so cash is really important and cash equals opportunity cash yeah. equals freedom it does particularly in this like in this earth at this time money is really is, the, is a huge currency and so i would highly recommend um, that you have some sort of stable, like stability with finance, with your finances. Some of the women I work with have dropped down to three days a week in their full time in their working for their employer and two days a week focusing on working for themselves. Other women full time. Some women have just gone, I've got some money in the bank or my partner can support me. I need to get out of this nine to five. It's killing me. I'm yeah. so unhappy. I can see my magic and my purpose and I'm being burnt out in this environment. So I've got to get out Patrice. And that, so they jump, she jumps on board. But another way that I love to help women too is also buy these other um, marketing vehicles that are out there. And um, me personally, I have doTERRA, but there are other ones out there. And what it means is, is that they can start, they can start testing their brand and it needs to be a product that aligns with them. Like it's not just like, oh, I'm going to sell some, uh, you know, packets of chips or something like that <laughs> doesn't align with me as a human being and my values. Yeah but using a marketing vehicle that can actually help them develop their brand, but also start bringing in an income. And then they can all that can, at a certain point, they can phase out their full time work and then they can use that, that financial backing with the marketing vehicle 
to actually do their passion work and they can feed into each other really beautifully. So there's lots of ways to do it, but definitely to answer your question, having some sort of financial stability. So it doesn't send you into such a spiral because it sent me into a full blown pressurized panic when I left my job. Cause I wasn't, I had money coming in, but I didn't have a good relationship with money. Um, and so uh, I was, I was putting myself internally in a, such a state of stress and panic. Like my system, my nervous system was under so much pressure. I had chewed, my whole jaw was so tense and locked. My teeth would ache, my jaw would ache. And the insides of my mouth were like, they weren't chewed, but they, the pressure in my mouth, like this is, this is the pressure wow. because of the financial situation. Yeah. And I was, and I was making money, but it was just, I didn't have that relationship with money. Like I, I teach the women that I'm, that I support to have like a relationship with money. Like they're their best friends. Like I grab my wallet in the morning and I'm like, this is what I, I literally have money cash in my wallet, a hundred dollar yes. note. Yes. So I have like a visual cue that I have cash. And when I spend money, I say, thank you. And you know, when I spend, I expand. And, and also in the morning I hold my wallet and I'm like, thank you so much money. Like you've helped me travel the world. This wallet I bought in Berlin with my best girlfriends and it was made in Portugal and my cupboard is filled with gorgeous clothes and it's like, thank you, money. And so... Yeah, I love that. that I'm going to start fundling fundling my purse. Well, but these days... Sorry about that, but I'm just so (laughs) passionate about money and finances and and yes, to, to... it no, just, I, I, lo- I make a joke of it, but it's not. Like, I absolutely agree with you. We are not taught about money, our relationship as with money. With women, like, I often go into people's houses and I'm like, oh, so how much did you pay for this, right? Because I'm always interested in, you know, the value exchange. And, and, and some people go, oh, I don't talk about money. I'm like, what the fuck's the problem? Just tell me how much you pay for it. It's not a reflection of who you are. I mean, I don't really care. I just want to know, you know. But it's so often when, um, I, I mean, even now, communicating with a VA, and I, I've asked about three times how much she charges because like, I want to know. She still hasn't come back to me, and that annoys the shit out of me. Like, tell me how much you charge so I can see if this is something we can do together, right? Yeah. And so part of the branding, and I mean, as you say, is that you can have the most magnificent brand and know your why and, and all those magical things you say. And yet if the relationship you have with money is not a good one or congruent one, then that can also add a big, yeah, a big spin-off to who you attract or who you don't attract, right? Because yeah. I always think if you put, if I'm penny pinching somewhere, I'm always careful because I'm like, be careful, girlfriend, because you are telling the universe that there's not enough and you know that's going to come back tenfold, right? And well, oh, 100%. I, I totally agree with you. And it's I'm like, I'm helping these women build these brands, right? Like they're owning themselves. I help them work on their self-worth. I have kinesiologists and hypnotherapists on my team, depending on, you know, what's right for them. Like I'm helping them like start to fall in love with themselves. Like I get them to put notes up against their shower wall that says like, I like myself and I matter and, and all these things. And if they're like building a brand and they're going out there and then when it comes to actually, you know, for example, for coaches sitting next to sitting across from the person and in the sales call or in like the serving call, I like to call it and help if they can't get to the point where they're just like, so would you be interested in finding out how we can work together and the different programs that I have and what I think would be right for you? Da, 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 it's worth 5,000, 10,000, $15,000. Like if you can't confidently in, a, in your energy, say those words, they can feel it and they can feel that you're backing out. And they're going to say no. Like if you're not 100% behind the value of yourself and behind your products and your services and the value that you bring and the cost that's attached to that, your sales calls are going to suffer so deeply. All the the life that you're here to create through that beautiful coaching business is going to suffer so deeply because you're not actually going to create the cash that you're here to create. And And when you have more cash in the bank, guess what, guys? You get to have more impact. Yes. You get to grow your brand. You get to invest in charities or create your own charities, help more people. Like money is freedom. Money is opportunity. Money is where you can actually make the impact that you know that you are here to make. 
And so if we don't start like backing ourselves and backing our value and backing the actual cost value of our prices, sorry, of our programs and our offerings, yes. you're not actually going to make the sale to make the money to make the impact. Yeah, yeah. And also, I mean, I remember when I started coaching, um, you know, to build up experience, I did give free sessions to build up my own confidence. Yep. And eventually I'm like, enough's enough. You know, I, I, and also like, it's not, I was new to coaching, but that didn't mean I didn't have 20 years of other experience behind me, you know? And I, I don't, at the time, and I still sometimes think this way, is I think, how would a man treat this? You know, because, <laughs> you know, speak to I remember being taught by this amazing coach. She was phenomenal. She was, you know, um, one of the coaches in the, the institution I was working with. And um, her, she goes out and she offers free coaching sessions. Her husband goes out and goes, yeah, I'm available for coaching. Anyone want to pay me for it? Like immediately, and I was like, Fuck, you know, that's the difference. So just own that shit, you know. And right. I, I love that. Um, I love that we're having this conversation. It's a really relevant one. And even with the Red Hot Truth, you know, and going for talking to people I want to talk to, you know, and and not going, oh, you know, they've got the status or they, they're so big, not undervaluing myself and going, actually, I'm good at what I do. I'm great at promoting. I'm great at pulling information out of people. How many times have guests said to me, you're so easy to talk to? And really owning that and going, this is a skill that people don't have. But I wonder then, coming back to that and branding, yep. it's interesting for me because you know, when we good at something, it mm. just feels so natural. We mm. forget we're good at it. And so it's easy to undervalue it. So, you know, I'm really good at communication and walking to a room and connecting people. But because I do it so naturally, I don't see it as a skill. So how can we help women acknowledge what they're good at? Yes, I love this question. And I, I, I often I just ask the women, like, what do you get annoyed with other, you know, something... Often when we're really good at something and it comes so natu naturally to us, we get annoyed when other people can't do it. No, no. <laughs> like, are you fucking kidding me? No, like, no, what's no, your, no. You're driving me mad. <laughs> sorry. Sorry if your audience doesn't like swearing, but see, this is my brand. This is who that, I am. That's not our audience, sorry. If you don't like swearing, you're on the wrong podcast. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> this is my brand. I always say, hey, guys, this is, this is who I am. Um, and so, yeah, I'm like, it, that can be a really great way to start to see what, something that you're really brilliant in. Like, oh my gosh, like for me, like I can really, I can get things done really, really quickly. And I get annoyed when people can't make quick decisions. And I'm like, oh my God, that's such like, whoa, that's like a superpower of mine. Um, and another way that you can start to see your brilliance is through your story. And you can start to see like the learnings that you've got from some tough times. And you're like, oh my God, I actually live those things now. Like I live that awareness or that knowing, like that's something so brilliant that you could help other people with, or that, could, that can be a superpower of yours. Another way is um, often when we're really, particularly for women, I think when we're really jealous of someone else, mm. it's, um, so for me, I was super jealous of my sister and of other incredible women in my life. Like Lindsay, she's super, um, she has loads of courage. She has a really big heart. Um, she's great at communicating all of these things. And I was so jealous of her and I was torturing myself because I'm like, oh, she's so amazing. All the attention's on her and, and none's on me. And so I'm like, well, I started to figure out, okay, if we, if we can only ever see in others what's in us, whether that's good, you know, bad or whatever, like if you're judging someone for their outfits or something, you're really just judging yourself. It's all just judgment of self, but we project it onto others. And so when you can start to see something that you admire in someone else, just know that that thing is in you. Yeah. Like just like deep down inside, that's your truth. That's your essence. There's lots, so many parts to us, but what you admire is they're super playful, that they're funny, they're a great speaker, like all of these things that I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm like, oh my God, I'm actually all of those things. <laughs> That's my true essence. That's why I'm so drawn to that incredible woman because, and it's not that I'm going to be doing things the way that Lindsay does it, my sister or those other women that I admire. I'll do it in my own unique way, but I still have that gift and that superpower. So there are just a few ways that you can 
start to see your own brilliance. And what I love to do is when you start to identify them like a, you know, oh, courageous or have a little, write a little story underneath it that actually of something that you have lived through where you actually embodied that because then you can start to see that that's who you are rather than just like a word that's over there. It's like, Oh no, that was that time where I actually confronted my boyfriend and actually s said the thing that I was really feeling that was courageous or the time um, I saw someone getting bullied at school. I remember when I was seven years old and I actually went over and I'm like, Hey, you know, stood up for that person. And just, like these little stories, these little evidence that that's your essence. So you can start to like paint the picture for yourself and start to own your bloody brilliance, like for real. Yeah, that's so amazing. And so I'm interested then because um, it's coming in, owning the brilliance, building the brand, but then it's about getting out there and openly saying, hey, world, this is me <laughs> and i i said that red hot truth is here to help women succeed by highlighting the difference yes. right? because, and um and yet i feel even in my own experience not so much now anymore i was so terrified of mm. going out there and being me because all the successful people out there we're not saying be you, you know? So how can we get women from, yes, I know who I am and I'm owning it to really going out there and living it? Yes. Great question. Two things I just want to, just want to set a bit of a context for, for business and branding and getting started. Number one, which is something you've already mentioned is playing the long game. Take the pressure of yourself. It's not going to happen tonight. It's not going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen next week. It's going to take years, but it's the most profound journey of your whole goddamn life. Mm -hmm. And so just take the pressure of yourself and know that you're going to be supported on the way and you're going to get to wherever you want to go. And to be honest, when you get to the place that you thought you wanted to get to, you're going to move the goalpost anyway. So just be along for the journey. That's the first thing I want to say, like play the long game, play the game of inches, play the one percenters, play the compounding effect, which is... You just keep taking these little actions every day, one percenters, and they just keep building. And so I just want everyone to take the pressure off themselves to be that successful person tomorrow because I promise you it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's there for you. If you have the desire, it's coming. Like something, some, some unseen force has planted that beautiful desire and that dream into your world and it's there for a reason. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to happen. So trust yourself and play the long game. The second thing I want to say right now to anyone out there is to know that whatever you're saying online and someone's success, and I know it's been said a million times, but I have to reiterate it, is that you're seeing someone's highlight, highlights reel and you're seeing someone after the gestation period. Mm -hmm. You're seeing like someone when they're like everything, the, the fruits of their labor, you know, like they're seeing that you're seeing when everything's like blooming. And they themselves, like everyone has gone through a period of like gestation where you plant the seeds and it takes time for like, you know, the pieces to be put in place. Mm -hmm. It's a universal law. It's like the, it's the law of cycles and everyone's just trying to, no, I want it to happen tomorrow. And it's just not the way that things happen. Like mm -hmm. you actually look in, in nature, a seed plants and it takes time to grow. It doesn't go from a seed to a huge tree that's a hundred years old and that magnificence that you walk past you're like whoa you've got a story to tell yeah and so just know that when you planted the seeds it's all going to happen for you and the more that you can take the pressure off yourself for it to happen tomorrow in the way that you plan the more the universe or whatever you want to believe in or call it the label is going to work through you to make it happen in the most beautiful way and in the most expansive way mm. And so just know that there's a gestation period. Like, it, 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 like when you're like, nothing's happening. I'm just bloody hell. Like I've done all the things that everyone told me to. And I'm just like, hasn't happened. I'm like, it's happening. Yes. I mean, I love that so much. I love that so much because, um, oh, I mean, I've been caught up in this so many fucking times, yeah. right? Like where yeah. I look at people I admire and I'm like, fuck, I love that so much. But, you know, why am I not there yet? I feel like I'm doing so much and I'm working on myself spiritually and emotionally and I'm working on the business. And, 
And I'm like, why the fuck is it not happening for me? And then because of that resistance, because I'm anxious and I'm annoyed, I'm resisting the beautiful unfolding of what it is. Yeah. And absolutely, and really, it was only just recently that I said to myself, actually, this thing with the virus, this thing with the virus has really allowed me to go, you know what, babe, this is a lifelong journey for you. Like, this what you're doing now, giving rise to the feminine by helping women live their red hot truth, this is your life's journey. Mm. So just keep moving forward with trust, with enjoyment, with love, for self and others. It always starts with self first. And just fucking go for it. And yeah. just let the rest take care of itself, right? Mm-hmm. It will just take care of itself. But it's just, I, I still feel we are... Um, let me only speak for me, because I can only speak for me. I'm so highly influenced by this instant gratification, mm. uh, what success is game, you know, having the big toys and this. The, I'm so, so influenced by that. I regularly, if not every minute of every day, I have to remind myself that is not what it is for you, Petra. You find your own journey. Yeah. And that is that is the work I have to do for me. Yeah. And also at the same time, which is like something that, so with so much of this and so much of what I'm so passionate about, it really is an unlearning from the traditional sense of business and branding into like this new way of being, which I feel as though is really going to be birthed in this after, you know, throughout this whole change and this world being shaken up by this virus and all the layers that are being impacted. I'm um, just like being called even more into helping women really unlearn and unravel everything we've been taught about even how to be. And this is, this mm. speaks directly to the rise of the divine feminine yes. where we get to be in our essence and trust and be creative and have obviously also have the masculine part of us, like, you know, the discipline and, and getting stuff done, but really dancing in the two because the world has been in so much of a place of, um, you know, structure, get shit, shit done, do, 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 work, 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 hustle, 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 burnout, burnout, burnout. Sorry, that's my own personal journey, but I know a lot of people <laughs> have experienced it and they're probably sitting here going, wait, am I in burnout? And I'm like, <laughs> you might be, but it's... Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but yeah, like I just, I feel as though there's this real calling right now for, mm. for us to just let go. And what you're talking about right now, where you're like, I've done all the things. I'm doing the bloody spiritual. I'm doing the emotional. I'm doing the business. All. I'm doing the do. And now I think it's a beautiful place and, and, and just a hot tip for anyone out there. You get to a place where, where you slow down and actually everything speeds up. Mm. You slow down and you let go. And when in that you provide space for the universe to come in and go, oh, she was so contracted for so long, bloody hell. Now she's actually focused on just, she's almost given up. She's yeah. just like, I actually just want to go for walks and be in the sun and forget about the whole bloody business thing because it's driving me mad because mm-hmm. nothing's working. And you actually like in that release and in that resistance to actually allowing everything in, you create space for all the beautiful opportunities to just rush on in. They're like waiting at the door, but you were like, no, I'm doing it my way. I'm going to do, 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 do and do it my way. And then you just like, fuck it, it's too much. I'm overwhelmed. I've done all the things that, I was, that society is telling me to do. Mm. And you actually release, you take the foot off the accelerator, you release control, you, that white knuckle grip you've got on the steering wheel of your life, you let it go. And suddenly everything you ever wanted just starts to bloody turn up. You didn't have to do so much. I know. I, I mean, I've experienced this in my own life. And I know yo-yo between the... I better be doing something on this this business, right? Because fuck if I don't, like if I'm sitting in the sunshine and enjoying the deliciousness of the sun, oh my God, like am I slacking off? Like, um, and so I, I feel that, as I said before, it's still, the invitation is really there to delve into the feminine and what divinely feminine really means. Because we're so... Once again, let me speak for myself. I'm so used to being in the masculine, the grinding, the gritting, the, uh, the, yeah, all of that drive and action. 
it feels so wrong to come mm. back to self, to enjoy. And it's really about exploring that. And I'll show you, and this is just, just to reiterate what you're saying, this is just such a silly example. But yesterday mm -hmm. I went to the, the grocery store, which seems to be a daily thing at the moment, which really annoys me because I really don't enjoy shopping that much. But I must enjoy it because I go all the time, right? But I walk the dogs as I go, so that's my grocery store. But I was in there and... I go to Aldi and I'm preparing for this drink, you know, I'm gonna make myself this immunity drink that my friend told me. And I've got the ginger and I've got the turmeric, but now I have to go and get the cinnamon at Aldi. And then I can't find the cinnamon, and then I find it, and it's so exciting to find it, right? And then I like potter along and it's social distancing, so the queue seems so long because everyone's spacing themselves out. But I stand there and I stay right by the shaving cream. I'm like, Oh my God, I really need a chicken shaving cream. Thank God I'm standing here because I would have forgotten it because I've forgotten it like the last six times I was in the shop, right? Yeah. And then just then, you know, the one of the tools that opened was about to open and I went and I put my two little things down and the guy at the other tool saw that I only had two items and there were like six peoples with trolley full, six people with trolley fulls of groceries. He went... Oh, have you only got those two things? I'm like, yeah, he goes, oh, don't worry, just come up here. So I bypassed all these people. <laughs> yes. Yes, guys. Like, Stop it. But because I was in such a playful mood and I just let go and I resigned myself to the fact of staying in this queue, that it all just unfolded so beautifully. So how do you, how do you think, um, please tell us from your experience and what you tell your clients, how can I get back into the divine feminine and just chill out? Yeah. It, and it's tough. Like when, for me personally, I was so, I grew up in a household where my parents worked so hard. My dad worked so hard for, you know, not a, not a huge salary. We, we had everything that we needed, but just working hours and hours and hours and, and, um, so much pressure around money in our household. And, and so I grew up with like this instilled in me to work really, really hard and also self-sabotage around money, like let it all. So it's like this, my whole system was geared toward, toward grinding really, really hard and not receiving that much. Mm. <laughs> so it's when it's that ingrained in you, it takes some time to unravel if you're doing, particularly if you're just going to, you know, try and do it on your own and just like keep letting it go and keep just reminding yourself to let go. And it is a practice. It's not like you just like, oh, okay, tomorrow I'm just going to let it all go and just like be at peace and just let everything in my world turn up because your subconscious mind who is running the entire show, which, you know, so many people, which is, which is, I do it too, you know, listening to so many podcasts and watching so many book, uh, reading so many books and watching so many YouTube clips and everything. And it's, and you're actually feeding your conscious mind. And so I won't get too much into that, but it's your subconscious mind that's actually running the show. Like when you're driving and, and you know, you're talking um, to a friend in the car or something and your foot's just actually on the pedal and that's your subconscious mind running the whole show. And so it can, it takes some time and that's okay. And that's beautiful. But where I would, where I would start is, just actually just stopping doing all the things like just actually let it go. Even if it's just for a few hours or can you in, in all of this, in this chaos of the coronavirus <laughs> that's happening in the world, can you just give yourself and self and start putting into your calendar some times where you just be, mm -hmm. even if it's just a little bit to just start, particularly if your system is so wound into the doing and the hustle and the grind, which mine personally was, it's taken me a, a really long time to unravel that. And I'm still unraveling it. It's still a process and it's still a commitment, but um, going for walks, getting in nature, actually having fun, like doing something playful and silly, like going, getting an ice cream with my boyfriend and sitting down at the river and having a giggle and just laughing and, and being as present as I can with him rather than still thinking, because this is a thing too, that I want to point out. What you can do is and again, this is a process to unravel. This is I'm going to give myself some time and, be in the sun and go for a walk and have an ice cream and, and switch off from work and or have a lay down. And what do you do when you do those things? Think about work. Mm -hmm. So you're not actually, which is what I did for a good year, which was like, Oh, I'm switching off. I'm like, no, my mind was still so tightly wound into thinking so deeply about all the things that I needed to do. 
like waking up in a panic at 4 a.m. Like, I've got so much stuff to do. And then, you know, it's, and so just being present with the fact and just keep catching yourself. That's all you have to do. All you have to do is be willing, willing, mm -hmm. like just leaning into it a little bit. Cause when you lean into giving yourself a break and actually stepping back from all of the do and going for a walk in the sunshine or grabbing a nice cream or whatever is just, even sometimes I, I used to write it on my hand, like, you know, whatever, just a little visual reminder of being present or being playful because you'll find your mind will go straight back into the doing and into the, um, the hustle or what all the things that you haven't done and how you've let everyone down, which is what I used to do a lot. Like I haven't done enough for everyone. I haven't done enough. I need to give more. I need to give more. Mm. And so just a little reminder um, on your arm, like even in pen or something when you go for a walk, because you'll, you'll find yourself, your subconscious mind will wander back to where you've always gone. So just keep very gently, so lovingly, just bring yourself back. Just bring yourself back. Bring yourself back. You wander. It's fine. Don't judge it. It's perfectly fine, but bring yourself back. And by the time you just, you, you'll be able to find, just find that you're actually present and in that playful place for longer. And it just keeps growing and it's a process and it's a, it's a, it's a long term game. It doesn't just happen. So that would be my advice. Like, you know, be playful, have some fun, get into nature, meditate. And then when you find yourself like actually still mind still in the grind, mm -hmm. it's okay. Don't judge it, but just bring yourself back. Yeah, I love that. And one thing I heard about, um, I follow a guru called Sadhguru. I've mentioned this a few yeah. times on the podcast. I love the man yeah. and or love the wisdom of the man. And um, yesterday I saw a YouTube thing with him on part. Um, let, me, let me start that again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yesterday I saw a YouTube video with him talking about the feminine, right? And one thing he said, was that in the, our society, economics has become God. Oh. It's almost like it's, we've made economics divine. And he's like, but that's not what life is. Life is not economics, oh. right? But, you know, it's almost like I constantly need to do something to make money. It's constantly me. I need to do something to, I need to be doing, 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 doing. And yet the feminine is in the art and the aesthetics and in the beauty. Mm. And it's this constantly measuring ourselves by what we're doing, by the results we're getting instead of in the being. And I feel that that's really, um, you know, when we meet people, it's not the first question we don't ask is who are you? The first question we ask is, what do you do? Yeah. And it's still measuring ourselves by economics, by our usefulness. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and that's why we've raped and pillaged the earth and everything else because we thought, well, it's not useful to make money. So then, you know, why bother? And mm. so it's really understanding that ingrained belief that we have that if, if we don't do something to make money, this is where this, the slide comes on, the different side of money. Yeah. And it's not useful, right? And it's really understanding that that's an ingrained thing in us. Yes. Um, and something that just popped up for me is something that I love that Gabby Bernstein, um, she's, a, she's a beautiful um, writer, Yay. speaker. Yeah, she, mm -hmm. I love her stuff so much. Um, but something that she, I remember she said a long time ago was she measures her success on how much fun she's having. Mm -hmm. Because the truth is, the red hot truth is, is that the more fun you have, the more money you make anyway. Yes. So mm -hmm. if you're feeling good and you're actually following your passion without expectation, that's a thing that I'm so passionate about helping the women that we understand is like follow your passion, follow your excitement without expectation. So you don't have that, that tight controlling mm -hmm. grip on it. Like follow the fun, follow the joy mm -hmm. and measure. If you can start to measure your success by how much fun you're having, because you're, if you want to talk about, energy and, and vibration yeah, totally. is, um, you know, like when you're at that vibration, you're actually going to be a, a perfect match, a vibrational match for the things you're looking to call in anyway, like the car, the partner, the money, the clients, the holiday, whatever it is. So it's like the, the key to all of this is, and it's not with like having fun and, and measuring your success by having fun. It's not that when you feel sad, you don't feel sad because 
we're human and we've been gifted all of these amazing emotions mm-hmm. and rage and heart being heartbroken are actually part of the deal of being human. And so it's not about not feeling those things because when you do, they just get stuffed inside and women are particularly really good at suppressing emotion mm-hmm. and pretending that everything's okay. Yeah. Like I went to an acupuncturist once and for anyone who has had acupuncture, I'm sure you know when they hit a point that really hurts, <laughs> you've got some shit there that's clogged up. And <laughs> it got this point between my two, my big toe and my second toe where she hit in like the, the meaty part there and it was like, it blew my mind with the wow. pain. I was like, ah, what's that? And she was like, that's rage, Patrice. Ah. The rage that you're not feeling, allowing your body to feel. I'm like, Woo! <laughs> and so, um, like, I get my women to scream into their pillows, like, because we don't just experience rage and we all have it. Like, we all hate our yeah. mother and father and sister or whatever at certain periods. We just do and we don't express it because it's not right and we have to be polite. Mm-hmm. And so, what I'm saying with measuring your success by having fun, it's not that you don't feel your emotions and actually an embodied leader. Is, and the red hot being like the red hot truth is like being true to what's coming up and actually like mm. experiencing it and letting that feeling like finish its cycle and and be come through you and be but have fun like we're so stuck in the doing when it comes to branding and business we're so stuck in how we think we should be and what everyone else is doing that we got so stuck in the doing and it doesn't become fun it becomes a chore mm. and then you lose lose that life force energy that actually attracts the money that you're looking to create so mm. this this you know there's so much focus on the economy and money it's it's the old way of branding and it's the old way of business and it's yeah. dying dying right now yeah, and I also want to say with branding is branding is how you show up in the world all the time, right? Yeah. It's not just, oh, this is my business, the branding. It's not like um, the olden day celebrities, you know, the celebrities are now doing personal branding and using vulnerability and authenticity to sell things. Yeah. But it's still the old way of, of being like, oh, okay, we need to sell some stuff. Oh, it looks like vulnerability seems to be the way to go now. Let's do that. It's no, it's, and celebrities are a little bit different, I suppose, because there is an artifice and there is a, um, a world of illusion. I mean, if you don't know that, then you need to wake up to that. But yeah. um, it's just understanding that how you show up in life is how you show up in everything, business mm. and life. This is why I always giggle at the term work-life balance because to me, I'm like, it's so misconstrued because work and life are the same thing. You're still doing it, sister, like, you know. They all amazing. touch each other. They all touch each other. It's all one thing. If your all relationship is suffering, your business is going to suffer. Like, it, it, you, are, you, are, you are the most magnificent, limitless mm. being, but you are one being like you we're all connected yes but all the parts of your life touch and that's why that's why I I continue to say you are your brand you are your business like not for everyone but for particularly for coaches yeah and a lot of entrepreneurs today you are your business and you are your brand so who I am behind closed doors is who I am in person and who I am online and do you know what the, the bloody beauty of that is I don't have to try so hard. Like I don't have, do you know what I mean? Like it's actually like, even if uh, one, it's going to make you more money, you're going to have more fun, but two, life gets a whole lot easier when you stop the facade. Like, and it's a process again. It's not just going to happen overnight, figuring out who you are, what's really going on underneath. Like it's, you know. The lifelong process I'm actually going to say there is there's never an end point. Like, yeah. you know, this is like it's a lifelong process. So get comfortable with that. Enjoy that. And understand you grow and you morph. I mean, just think about yourself. Like one year ago, six months ago, whatever. Like you weren't the same person then than you are now. And, you know, thank God for that, right? Yeah. Because you know, if I think about myself as a teenager, I do now. Like, oh. yeah. And, you know, I just think, you know, I acknowledge it is a lifelong process. There's never an end. And because there's never an end, you can never get it wrong. And mm. that's the beautiful thing about it. Wow. Well, like, and I, this conversation is so wonderful because I feel that, We are not when we in the old traditional brand sense of branding, this conversation would not have been held, right? But it's just that's the beauty of what you do. You look at the woman 
as a whole person and go, we need to find out where you, who you are, your red hot truth, you know. And then we need to bring that to the party. And that's why we all dress in the party. <laughs> so, I mean, that's it. And you said to me, um, when we were talking before, you said, you know, we were talking about social media and, and, and our feelings about social media, but you said, you know, social media is there and so I'm going to make it what I want to make it mm. and you've got the brand party, right? So tell us yeah. a little bit about, about the brand party. Yes. So, again, this is, this is an evolution. So it's my Facebook group. Um, at the moment, it has about 170 women in there and um, initially it was called the Social Love Club. So it was like social, social media, like Social Love Club, but also like had it like being social. And so... Um, so it's, I just want to like, I just want to presence that because I want to show people that your brand will grow and move and it will evolve as you do. And it's absolutely perfect and wonderful mm-hmm. when it does. Like you don't, you know, you get so stuck. You're like, Oh no, I don't, I, you know, everyone knows me as this. And it's like, just let everyone know, Hey guys, I've changed as a person. I've just learned this and this is coming with me. Do you want to come along for the journey? Perfect. Mm-hmm. This, and so I just wanted to like, presence that because people can get you know I've, I've developed this brand and people know me as this and, da, 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 and it's like this is where you are your brand and you are your business as you grow and evolve it does too yes um and uh, yeah there's so much I want to say about that but <laughs> the brand party the brand party um so me as a person I love to have a good time I love to wear costumes I go to Burning Man every year I like I I love to just go like I'm there's so many parts of me and so many facets as there are to all of us. Mm. And particularly with identity, something that I personally struggled with so much was that I grew up as a very like conservative country girl in a like gorgeous, you know, family and um, on the land and, and very, a very conservative family in a lot of ways. And then when I um, left school, I was wild. Like I was like partying and meeting all these people. And it was like, and so I had this whole kind of identity crisis where I'm like, everyone knows me as a country girl you know, with a big heart and da And then I'm actually like, I'm partying and I go to Burning Man and, you know, I just I want to live this free lifestyle. And I'm actually a big hippie at heart. And I was like torn because I'm like, oh, my family know me as country and conservative and da da And so I was actually living in Sydney for about 10 years. And then I got to a point where I'm like, I've, I've lived this lifestyle. I think I need to go back to the country. I hadn't, I went to boarding school. So I hadn't actually been living on the farm with my family since year eight. And so I, w- I moved home. I packed up everything and I moved and I just went to the farm and mum and dad have full-time jobs. So I was actually on my own for a lot of the time. And through that, I went through a huge, I guess, um, awakening spiritually, emotionally, lots of beautiful things ch- and also challenging. And in that time, I started to experience that I can be all of the parts of me and I can be the party girl with the big heart and I can go home and put my Wrangler jeans on and my boots and help dad move sheep and ride a horse and be super hands-on practical. And I can also be a full-blown hippie, want to hug trees. I can also be wild and party and travel the world. I can also be a speaker. I can also be quiet. I can be very loud. I can party and dance a lot on the dance floor and be the star of the show. I can also be on the wall. And these are all parts of me and I get to own all of that. And so in this group, the brand party, I get, I want women to be all parts of them. And I love like, because my, you know, I, I turn up in, um, when I feel like it in like costume jewelry in like Burning Man stuff. Um, you know, today I'm, I, I also love to wear like beautiful, um, like kind of corporate or beautiful out, like a, whatever feels right to me. I go with that because at the end of the day, it's my energy that, mm. that is my true brand. Like that's who I really am. And so I just want people to be women to be in that group, the brand party and hop on the dance floor of life and give it your all and stop caring so much about what everyone else, what you think everyone else thinks of you because I lived there for 28 years. I would literally be on dance floors at parties thinking, Oh, if I dance like this, that is that person watching me? Will they think I'm cool? And, and everything I did was to outside of me thinking about what other people would think about me. And you just never get anywhere. Mm. And so the more I'm me, the more I focus on me and having fun, having a good time and following my passions, 
the more I'm actually attracting all of these people that I wanted to look at me. And now I almost don't really care, <laughs> except that I want all these amazing friends and legends and heart-centered people around me. And I'm like, well, the more I just go in on me and have step on this dance floor of life, do what I feel like I came here to do, which at this point in time is help women unlock their brilliance and create a life and a brand and a business of their absolute dreams like that. I'm just following that. And I'm not doing like, I'm not posting on social media every day. Like I used to, like my, some coaches have told me I'm actually just feeling into my gut and into my body and just, and just being in the flow of this life, which yeah, is, which I want other people to be in for them too. And what it looks like for me, it won't look like for you and it won't look like for the, for the listeners or the people watching. But I, I just love this idea of a party where you could just get to be all of yourself and you're on the dance floor and you're cutting shapes and maybe you're doing the funky chicken because it feels right for you, but yes. you're just doing what's right for you. And mm -hmm. in that energy, you are in your own life force energy and it's so much fun and playful and actually building a brand from being all of you in that place. Mm -hmm is where the magic lies. So that's why I have the brand party. And I just you know the word party for me, you know, it means like fun and having a good time. And, and so that's why, and th that's why I created it. Yeah. I love it. I just, um, and you shine when you talk about it. It's so great. Like you light up and I totally relate to that. I'm so multifaceted and I struggled a lot in my life with the concept, you know, you have to, I have to be one thing and, you know, I have to be good at this thing and I have to be this and I'm like, but I'm not, I'm so multifaceted. I, I just, I don't even, I, I, I couldn't even possibly explain to you all the beautiful facets I have, you know, and, and it's almost like, you know, if I had to put into multiple personalities, I mean, I'd have thousands, right? <laughs> So great. I'm never alone. No, I'm not. I'm never it's alone. Thank you for sharing that. And I also just I always like to think about examples out there in the world because I I sometimes feel that I found it difficult to um yeah, to see what I'm feeling. And the one person that really stands out for me is Lady Gaga. You know, mm. I just think of this fantastic woman who yeah. was just so outrageous you know and then and she dominated the world for so long mm -hmm. she was outrageous in, in outfits and she's exceptional as an artist mm -hmm. and she's just this woman you know take away all the makeup and the beautiful exterior and the outrageousness and then she's just this woman you know yeah. and 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 so i look at her and i go wow she's amazing and the interesting thing about her is no one compares to lady gaga for me mm. like no yeah. there's no well who's another lady gaga no can't find you right and that's the beautiful thing about being true to your red hot truth and to your brand is yeah. no one can compare to you no that's the beauty of it Everyone's right. looking, everyone's looking for their point of difference. How can I stand out in my saturated market? And, and, and for a while, and this is my experience too, I'm like, well, that's working for Marie Folio and that's working for Gabby Bernstein and that's working for, you know, and like I'll cherry pick and, and make that yes. my own, which is, it's a process in itself. And it's actually okay to go through that because you get to test and trial, but there is just a certain point where you're just like, if I just cleared my schedule and just sat with myself, what actually feels good for me? Mm. If like, if I was to put logic aside and you know, if, if, if I just didn't care what anyone else thought of me, even for just one hour and I sat with a, a notepad or something, or I just even sat and I closed my eyes and I dreamed of what, you know, like what would that look like? Because that's where you'll get your unique point of difference. That's where you will stand out in your market when you actually own that part of you. And that's what Lady Gaga does like, like next level. So I, I, I agree. I love her creativity and I'm a super creative person. So we all are creative and that's our essence. But yeah, I, I feel you. She's so epic and um, yeah, she just owns that. And it's, it's like, let's be real. It's challenging. Totally. It's not like this is an easy breezy. Like I went home for eight months and was like had to deal with so many of my thoughts and be alone and and um and cry and which also to be honest I, I love doing anyway but <laughs> but it, 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 it's such an uh, unreal journey and we came here to extend and to really just get to know ourselves like if your purpose on earth earth is just to to, to be the truest version of you like that is fucking profound 
Like yes. that's all you're like, that's what we're here to do. And there's obviously lots of ways that we can, other words we can use for our purpose, but truly that's, I, I personally believe like that's what we're actually, that's the purpose. That's the expansion. That's the growth. And so, and that's where your business gets to flourish. And that's where people just fall in love with you because you're not being this fake other version of you. You're being the real version of you. And so much trust gets built there. Mm. So much trust. And everyone's looking for that no like, trust, buy. And it's like, if you're being the fake version of you, like they're going to no like, trust, buy, and then they get into your program and it's not actually real. Yeah. And it, all that trust falls away. And what's the, like, if you're 95 years old laying on your deathbed and you've, you know, you're happy or you're laying in, like, what was my life? I'm like, I did lots of fake business and I was really a fake version of myself. And like, it, it just wouldn't feel good. I don't think like, you, cause at the end of the day, like you'll have all this money in your account, maybe, but you're like, I wasn't actually the true version of myself. And I just think if you can be lying there and going, I was actually a full version of me. I tested it out. I made a shitload of mistakes, but God, it was fun and hilarious. And I can laugh about it that now I didn't die. Um, I think that it would be a beautiful place to be in to know that you actually lived with integrity in line with yourself and, and people turned up for you because they were so like, particularly in this climate right now, we're seeing so many people or businesses or leaders crumble because of how fake and how much yeah. bullshit there is. And, Oh, it's just making me wake up in a whole new level to how passionate I am to helping women like live their red hot truth so that they can build a business and a brand and a life from that place. So it's genuine and real and they, they lead from their humanness and they, and they lead from, they lead themselves first before we try and lead or save, particularly for coaches leading or saving anyone else, like lead and save and find certainty and truth and creativity in yourself and support others from that place. It's so genuine. I love that so much. I just want to um, say, because I'm conscious of time and I, I could speak to you for hours. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we could. Um, one thing I want to say, and I want to bring that back to you as well, is I heard this somewhere and I can't recall, but it was the story about death comes knocking at your door and says, hey, Patrice, it's time. And you're like, hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't I get a week or something to like live my life? And death goes, well, what have you been doing for the last 30 odd years? Right? Oh. So I just want to share that with you because that was really profound to me because I thought we, I have this, I have this, I must have the subconscious belief that I'm going to live forever. That, you know, my time is coming. It's, 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 you know, it's just, it's just around the corner. I know it's just around the corner. Hang on, hang on. The time's now. The time is now. And this virus, whatever you believe around it, I have very certain viewpoints around it. But mm. this is the, if not now, like if it doesn't take a fucking mm. pandemic, right, to kick you up your moo moo and say, hey, now, then I don't know, you might as well just go dig your own grave now and lay in it and hope to die, right? And I just, on that point, I just want to talk about, because I saw it on your website and I do want to bring it up about your partner and your partner's accident. And I, I just love you to share that and share the lessons you've learned from that experience. Definitely. Yeah. So uh, in June last year, 2019, um, I was in I was in Spain with my boyfriend. We've been together for eleven years now, so a long time. And um, when we were in Spain, my partner fell from a balcony, three stories, and actually like went head first into concrete. And so I was the first one to him when it happened, and uh, he looked like he was in a car accident. Like there was pretty pretty um, horrific the visuals of it all, and and trying to help him breathe and and everything and. Um, from that point, from that moment, I'm just going to be completely transparent. And what's like coming through me to speak right now is that I was guided. I, I have developed a, a spiritual relationship and, and opened up my channel, um, for a couple of years now, but really in that moment, I felt incredibly guided and supported. And so Ted was taken, my partner was taken to, in an ambulance and the police officers in Spain, I couldn't, I can't speak Spanish, <laughs> um, what? So, but what I was getting from them is that they thought that maybe I'd pushed him. Or like, <laughs> oh yes. my God, you're joking. <laughs> no. So they took, put me in the paddy wagon in the back on my own 
and I'm covered in blood and um, take me to the police station. And in that time I'm sitting there and my guides, my, my spirit squad, I like to call them, they were typing, they had my, they, I had my phone in my hands and they were typing through my fingers in my notes, giving me clear guidance that everything was going to be okay and what to do and like clear dialogue in the way that I'm speaking to you now in English, not in like signs and looking cryptic. It was like clear as, clear as day. And so from that period, um, that, that's just one huge learning that I've got from this and something that I'm also passionate about with helping women is, is in some way, shape or form, like trusting themselves on a whole new level to see how magical we are, that we can actually be very connected to the unseen and be very, very supported. Mm -hmm. So that's just one huge learning. So I was, so um, Ted was then in a coma for a month and we were in Spain. Um, and then when he woke up, he was actually in delirium for about two to three months, which means he, um, like he's, he's, he's awake, eyes open, but consciously and what he was saying didn't make sense. And actually he was saying some really hysterical things like, telling me how to boil bacon and um, <laughs> telling me he was in a UFO and this stuff. And so for me, I was, I've written a lot of this stuff down. I'm going to put it into a book because he said some pretty hilarious things like, can you believe Bill Cosby's president? I'm like, no, Ted. Um, <laughs> so, but yes, yeah, so for three months, um, we couldn't actually leave the island that we were in in Spain because of the fluid and the air and things in his brain. He couldn't even get a boat. We couldn't leave to go to Mallorca, the main island, or we couldn't go to London or anything. We were trying to strategize as to how we can get off this tiny island. And I was incredibly supported, as I said, by my guides. Like they were just channel, literally channel through me. Like I wouldn't have to meditate. Like it's just like coming through like Patrice, he needs, he's gonna, he needs to go back to the hospital. And we, one day we took him out. He needs to go back and he had an emergency surgery or getting um, Reiki. Um, we had a sound healer come and see him. Um, in ICU, like on every day while he was like three days after the accident, like I was very, very supported. But in that time when I was in Spain with him, his mother and I were with him. And when he came out of ICU in the coma, we had to be with him 24 hours a day because he had lots of broken bones and a brain injury. And so he didn't know he had broken bones. So we'd try and walk all the time and all this stuff. So we had to be with him physically every minute of every day yeah. for two months. And so in that period when I was, so his mum and I would do 24 hours on and 24 hours off, like literally sleeping in the hospital next to, on this plastic thing next to him. And so when I was with him, I'm physically with him, but because he's has delirium, he's not present. So I was on my own. And then for the 24 hours when I wasn't physically in the hospital and had a break, I'd be swimming in on my own. And so the beauty of this whole situation was that I had so much time to reflect on my life. And what people are probably experiencing now with coronavirus and if you're feeling fear and panic is that you might be experiencing, which I did, all of my other insecurities come to the surface. It's like everything's coming up to be released. Things that had nothing to do with Ted's injury and the uncertainty, like just all my fears and insecurities. Like I was even like questioning, I'm like, oh, wait, does Ted even love me? And just all this, you know, like all this stuff, like all my insecurities and my little girl not being held coming up. So in this period, I was given so much space to be with myself and really I'm sitting there going, okay, Ted could have died and he didn't. And I'm like, whoa, life's precious. Like I felt it in my body and I'm sure there are people listening to this who have been through a, a traumatic experience of someone maybe nearly dying or dying and you realize how precious and special life is. Mm. And it's not in all the big things, it's the little things. It was even one day we were moved out of a hotel, we moved out of hotels and I was able to make my, my own, myself a salad because I had a kitchen and I was sitting there going, whoa, like the flavours of this salad and making it with my own ingredient, like the things that I love in one, like I was like the, the simplicity and the beauty of that, like that's life in these little moments, in these little things. And so, yeah, in all of this space, I really got to be with myself and while I'm like, I was still doing lots of like visual branding, but I was doing the coaching, but I was still doing elements of like focusing on the visual branding. And I was like, Patrice, what am I really here to do? Like if I really just let everything go, what really fills me up, like fills my body with joy. And I'm like, it's really helping women really just love themselves and back themselves and see that they can live the life of their dreams through a brand mm. through them being themselves and people just turning up. because they, they're fucking magnetized to them. <laughs> Don't they, right? It gets to be like that. And I'm like, what's my truth? Like, what am I still holding on to that's not actually my truth because of society? And I'm like, I just 
I'm, I'm going through this period, like Ted had built a house. I had to sell it. It was like, I had to sell this house online. I've never done anything like it. Also, um, we had lots of financial kind of, we like, we didn't have enough money to get home when we thought that Ted needed, particularly when we thought Ted needed, um, the air ambulance to get home and all of these medical bills are coming in. It was huge, like huge amounts of money. And, um, so we you know we raised two hundred fifty thousand dollars like really quickly. So I was, it's amazing when you clear your schedule and you actually do the things that are really important and they're coming up, the big things. You get laser lucid focus and you can achieve anything. Mm. Like my boyfriend, I was making decisions around like brain surgeries and everything. I'm also raising funds. I'm selling a house. I'm. It's amazing what you can do when you actually clear all the bullshit that you're getting distracted with. And at the same time, I'm having like huge personal development just within my side of myself. I'm like just seeing patterns of myself and going that thing that I'm doing, like procrastinating or holding on to something just because I can't, because I, it's, there's like guilt around letting that thing go. Cause it's, um, you know, a course that I was doing, you know, that I'd paid all this money for. I'm like, it's not actually benefiting me and just actually just letting it go. Mm. Like stop, you know, stop working with coaches that aren't actually really aligned with how you feel inside. Like for real, like just, like letting everything go, getting focused on the things that matter and the magic that happens from that place. And um, so anyway, we came back to Australia and since then Ted has had the most miraculous recovery. Also very, very fucked up and challenging for him too. Like, don't get me wrong, but very miraculous, magical. And in that time, I'm just like, I've just birthed this whole new era of my business that I feel so passionate about and I'm so lit up by and I'm so turned on by and I'm so supported the more I just keep committing to what actually feels right and, and my dreams and who I'm here to hear, who I'm here to serve, like everything else just falls away and we get so supported. And so I've just, I deeply can feel how magical this life is, how special it is, how guided we are if we choose to, if we choose to be. And when the more that we can just stop getting distracted by all those little things that we know aren't really here for us or for our highest good, the more the, well, the more when we actually let that stuff go, we create space for the things that we're really looking to call in. Mm. So my life right now is beyond my wildest dreams, like beyond my wildest dreams. Mm. And looking after my partner in that way, as I said, we've been together for 11 years and we are closer than ever. And the love that we have for each other and the relation that we have is something that like, isn't in any fairy tale. Like it's beyond that. Mm. It's, it's, it's beyond my wildest dreams. And so, yeah, those, those challenging times, they make you. And if you choose to see the gift, like even day three, I think because of the personal development work that I've done, I was like, where's the gift in this? Like he was in a coma and things were uncertain, but I was like, I was sitting on the ocean in the ocean um, in Spain. And I was like, I was sitting there going, there's so many gifts here. Where, where are they? What are they? And I was like, oh, Ted's sister who lives in London who we never get to see. I've been with Ted for 10 years and I've barely spent any time with her. She was over there and she was staying for weeks. And I was like, I'm spending, I get to spend so much time with Ted's family. Mm. So much time with his mum. We get to bond on a whole new level. I get to like care for Ted. I get to be there for Ted the way that he's been there. Like just, just gifts were like, pew, 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 pew. Um, so yeah. So just, yeah, the most incredible experience of my life. Oh, I love that so much. <laughs> it's so, uh, it's, um, thank you for sharing. And I, um, and it's, uh, what I really get out of that is welcoming the challenges, you know, mm. just welcoming them because they really do allow us to cut away the fucking bullshit and just laser focus and come back to truth and go, wow, look at this this incredible life we've been gifted and this guidance that's available to us all the time and just yeah and so instead of hiding instead of hiding and trying to control and be safe just go for it because sometimes and as has happened you know with you guys is sometimes life will give us the lesson if we don't pay enough attention. And, um, yeah, and that's just, I really wanted women to hear that because you don't have to go through that great adversity to experience what you are now experiencing, to get the 
the life that you've dreamed of, like that you didn't even dream of. That's greater than you could have ever have dreamt of. And that's not because you got a bigger house or a bigger car or that it's because of who you've become. And the, it's almost like the blinkers have been peeled away and now you see the true value of life. And um, that's a real lesson to me. And, and I, take that I take your experience on board and I go well how can I take my blinkers off and truly immerse myself in life and so thank you for sharing that so to um come to my two favorite questions in the whole interview if I, is um well it's one question two anyway semantics what is your red hot truth and how are you living it my red hot truth I have lots of red hot truths, but the main one that's just, and just, just a presence again, I'm just letting everyone know I'm really just trusting what's coming up right now. Like I just want women to start trusting what's coming up and my red hot truth that wants to be ex- expressed right now is that we are the, we are the creators of our reality. We are the creators of our lives. Like we are in the driver's seat and it's, it's like, you know, maybe sometimes we've hopped into a Tesla <laughs> And it's just letting, we're letting it drive us around to where it want to go. It wants to go. And it's like, how can we hop in the driver's seat of our life and de- deliberately create the life of our dreams? Because anything is possible. Mm. Anything is possible. Anything that any dream that's come into your mind to whatever it is, like how crazy and how big and how ridiculous and how, how outrageous, like that is possible for you. Mm. but we just need to start creating on the inside the beliefs, the feelings, the stories, the thoughts that actually align with that. So you can start creating your reality from the inside out because we're so conditioned to want to make ourselves feel better or do like live the life, our dreams from the external Mm -hmm. to fill it up. And it really has to come from you sitting with yourself and playing the internal game. I particularly with branding and with business, I strongly believe in it being an 80% internal game, 20% strategy. Now, for so many, it's been 80% strategy and 20% internal game, but really the magic. And so can you see the magic in that? We don't have to do so much, particularly for the divine feminine, trusting in our creativity and our intuition and our inspiration and our essence mm-hmm. and the flow of life to act and the, the, the life force to flow through us. So it's back to my point, living a really deliberate life and not being on autopilot because I can speak from my experience. I lived on autopilot for 27 years. I was just so, I didn't even know that you could be so deliberate with, with your choices and you can create the life of your dreams. Um, and I think, yeah, particularly if there's coaches on here, another red hot truth and something that I've had to learn myself is the, the I forget the quote, it's beautiful rum dust quote, but the, the essence of it is, is that, the only thing that we can do, the only thing I can do for you is like heal myself. And the only thing you can do for me is heal yourself. Mm. I think so often, and again, this comes with playing that external game where we're trying to actually heal and support others to actually make ourselves feel better and create the healing inside of ourselves. But particularly if we're looking to change the world and make the world a better place, heal yourself, Mm. focus on yourself, love yourself. Start there because the healing is in our own hands. It's a, um, it's a beautiful line from a song from India, I read, but the healing is in our hands. Mm, I love that so much. And, and yes, um, amen, sister. <laughs> I love that so much. And that's, and that's exactly what it is. It's come back to your red hot truth and know that that's the only thing you ever need to do. Like that is your only journey. You know, just come back, come back to self, come back to self. And it's almost like we've been given the greatest challenge is coming back to self. And yet it's the most. And as we, as you're experiencing now, you know, the greatest challenge is it has the greatest reward. So, um, yeah, it's amazing. Thank you. And just um, where can the fabulous audience get hold of you, fabulous lady? Yes. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Please, guys, come and join the brand party. It's, it is for women only. So, um, if you're a lady and you want to cop on the dance floor of life and create a brand and a business that just sets your whole world on fire and supports people around you in the most beautiful way, come to the brand party Facebook group. 
Um, but also you can find me on Facebook. It's my handle is Patrice Douglas branding and on Instagram, it's Patrice Douglas with two underscores at the end. <laughs> you, can, you can easily find me guys, please, please come over. Um, you can always ask me any questions. I love to help people. Even if you don't know where to start, like the, the, the silliest questions are the best questions. The ones that you're like, Oh my God, is that too simple to ask? They're the most powerful questions because we try and overcomplicate everything. It's a it's a, an illusion of our lifetime. Mm. Things get to be super simple, guys. So if it's anywhere anywhere you are, wherever you are is the perfect place to to get started. And any question you have is the perfect question. So yeah, thank, thank you. So you. Much. Oh wow! And I just want to you know as you can hear or see whichever way you enjoying this content as you can. Here, Patrice is different. And if you really want to come back to your real truth, you want to come and show up in the world in your divine feminine and serve from that place, which is really the only place I believe we can truly serve from if we've been truly authentic to ourselves, then come and check out this hot chick. Um, make sure you've got some party gear going on. <laughs> um, so Patrice, I mean, once again, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and yourself and for showing up in your truth and for doing the amazing work you're doing. And um, I just acknowledge you for that. And I thank you for that. And um, I just um, feel that you are definitely in the right place where you need to be. And that's so exciting for me to see. And so I'm so excited to share this wisdom with our audience because, man, it's going to blow their socks yeah. off. So yeah. thanks, girlfriend. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I have just had an absolute ball. Yeah, it's, you said we could talk for, for bloody hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll end it now. I'll see you soon. Ciao, Bella. Mwah. Bye. Mwah. Well, that's a wrap, everyone. Thank you for being here with us at the Red Hot Truth Podcast. If you loved it as much as we did, please download this episode, share it with your friends, and remember to subscribe. Your time to shine is now. See you next time. Ciao, Bella.